January went by at a glacial pace. Here we are, February 1st. Congratulations, we made it through the first month of 2023. In today's video, I have a lot of fails to share with you guys. I do these videos monthly, obviously, they're monthly favorites and fails, and I have them all saved in a playlist if you wanna go back and see what I tried out in prior months and liked and didn't like. Elta MD UV Luminous. Did you see my reel of this sunscreen? I don't know what got into Elta MD with this. If you were thinking of purchasing Elta MD UV Luminous, uh, keep watching. This water resistant mineral sunscreen claims to have a light rosy tint. In my opinion, it looks a bit like Pepto Bismol. Now it's not greasy, it doesn't pill, but it's one of those mineral sunscreens that's a bit on the drying side. It obviously leaves a white cast. I honestly don't think it's that wildly different from any other mineral sunscreen to justify the $36 price point. It's just not their typical work. I love many Elta MD sunscreens, and so I was really excited to see this. Tinted, I thought it might be a good option for lighter skin tones who always struggle to find tinted sunscreens. You're gonna need an ocean of calamine lotion. <laughs> Comment below on if you remember that song. Anyway, this is a water resistant mineral sunscreen, but on the skin, at least for me, chalky white, I mean, striking white cast. <laughs> yeah, I went to Kroger with this on and I was getting some looks. It's not cheap either, 1.7 ounces. Next up is the Bare Republic Mineral Sunscreen Gel Lotion. I've noticed this in Target a handful of times and my most recent Target Shop With Me video from this month, I decided to go ahead and purchase it and give it a try. Oh my God, it feels like chalk. SPF 30 and the cast is that of a like baby SPF 50 zinc oxide sunscreen. It's pretty striking. And this breaks apart on the surface of the skin. It takes forever to rub on. It's chalky, it's flaky, it's cakey. I also tried this on my body. Oh my gosh, it feels like that chalk sensation when you touch chalk, which I do not like. It just kind of gives me the willies. Pulls the skin down tight, very drying. Even if you like a super matte sunscreen, this just breaks apart. It's a zinc oxide sunscreen screen and I was like I said I was pretty I was looking forward to this because the ingredients seemed pretty good but yeah this was definitely a fail for me because of the cast. I swung into Walmart this month and I was so excited to see these elf camo CC creams. I think I had heard about these at one point and kind of forgot about them. I decided to buy this one in the shade light 210N. This is a hybrid sunscreen SPF 30. It also has niacinamide helpful for redness. It has some peptides which can help with the moisture content in the skin. While the shade on this worked out really well for me, and I will say the coverage is pretty good. Like if you have some discoloration, redness that you're trying to camouflage, this really does a good job. However, it's super drying and it just accentuates the look of any crease, crevice, or pore. I'm not one to fixate on my pores, but man, this really made them look like Swiss cheese. Smiling with this just accentuates all the little fine lines. It's not comfortable to wear. It made my face kind of itchy. I was really bummed because they have a pretty nice shade selection. The shade though did end up working out for me. Light 210N. The other thing about this that's worth noting is like, the coverage is really good, but to apply this liberally to all sun exposed surfaces of the face, like you should a sunscreen, it's gonna look really weird. This is very drying. Yeah, between this, this, and this, that's a lot of fails for one month. Um, save yourself money if you were thinking about any of these. I do not recommend them. They don't look good. And I question, you know, when sunscreens clump up like the Bare Republic did, I, I really, start to lose faith that they're offering much in the way of UV protection, so I would not bother. But I did have a significant sunscreen win this month. These Neutrogena Pure Screen Mineral UV Tint Face Liquids, light, medium, medium deep, and deep tones, love. Nice, demi-matte, dewy to hydrated appearance on the skin surface. SPF 30, water resistant, 80 minutes. I have yet to come across a drugstore tinted sunscreen that is as good as this, that looks as good as this. It doesn't provide as much in the way of actual camouflage of dark spots or light spots, but it really does blend into the skin, giving a very natural appearance to the skin. It is actually quite sheer. There's no cast 
for me with the shade medium. I get like maybe a little bit at the hairline with the light shade, but I'm still able to wear it and nobody is like staring at me and I think it looks good. This one looks really good. I also do the medium deep and the medium deep looks more like I'm wearing sunless tanner. No orangey hues with these, but it also doesn't give a pink look to the skin. If you're somebody who has a pale skin type, highly suggest trying the light shade. It's very good. So I strongly recommended them in my video reviewing them. And a lot of you guys have given me positive feedback so far. You purchased it, you're loving it. I've recommended it to people in my personal life who have purchased it and are loving it. They really did a good job here and I'm really excited. Maybe 2023 is going to be the year in which more brands come out with good quality cosmetically pleasing tinted sunscreens and we don't have to necessarily rely on the more expensive brands going back to like 2015 2016 Elta MD was my go-to for tinted sunscreens and then I found color science which I still love and they still really come through with winning formulas but they're obviously very pricey we're getting cosmetically acceptable quality tinted mineral sunscreens, at least from Neutrogena. And I think more brands should, should step up and give us some more offerings. <laughs> so those are the sunscreens that I tried out over this past month. Stay tuned because in February, I'm gonna be doing a video on Korean skincare products that I have been trying out that I got in those advent calendars back in December. I have a lot of great reviews on those products coming for you guys in that video. Speaking of which, in my last monthly favorite favorites video, I talked about the Etude House Skin Fix Tint, and I talked about how I loved wearing it on my cheeks as like a blush. It's meant for, as a lip stain, and I'm currently wearing it as a lip stain. So this is what it looks like on. I really like it as a lip stain because it stays in place. It's not super drying, but it also kind of gives a bit of a matte finish. I really like this product. It's really good. And I have the shade Midnight Mauve. I've been really happy with this. I f have found, and I'm not a makeup person, so take this with a grain of salt, but I have found that the Korean beauty brands, their makeup is underrated. Like the best brow pencils I have ever used have come from Korean beauty brands. I don't get the same experience with the American brands <laughs> of brow pencils. I just don't find that the American brands of brow pencils are as good. Now I haven't tried that many, but every time I try an American brand, like the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones, or um, any, any of the other popular brands that you get at like Sephora or even the drugstore brands, they don't compare to the Korean eyebrow pencils for me at least. Um, speaking of which, I recently finished up an eyebrow pencil from that Korean beauty calendar that I loved. I'm blanking on the name of it, but it was really good. So stay tuned for that video coming in February reviewing the Korean skincare products that I got in those advent calendars, like the noteworthy products. Now, January is a month where people like to like get everything organized, myself included. I did some decluttering this past month and organizing. And if you've been following my videos for any number of years, you always see like my yoga mat floating around in the background my free weights floating around, rolling around. I'm always like moving them. So this year I was finally like, I have had enough of miscellaneous exercise equipment floating about. And I bought this storage cart on Amazon and I love it because it doesn't take up very much space at all, but it holds a ton, holds my yoga mats. And then it holds the free weights on dedicated shelves. It was not difficult to put together. And it came with the option to put wheels in if you want to be able to roll it around. I chose not to do that. And you get a lot of storage out of it. It's really helped with the organizing for sure. I did some pretty significant closet organizing, not so much purging because I didn't really have that many items of clothing that I needed or wanted to get rid of. Um, I pretty much wear my clothes all the time. I just organize my closet. I also organize my laundry closet where my washer and dryer is and the shelf above it. And I've been very proud of myself for keeping on top of that. When your space is tidy and picked up and things are organized and they have a place and it's just not chaos, it's really motivating too to see things get tidied up and you appreciate the things that you have a lot more when your space is neat and tidy. I also organized my desk a bit, did some picking up there because things were getting out of control. I love pens, specifically the Pilot G2 pens. I absolutely love. They've just been floating around on the top of my desk for a while. I purchased this pen holder on Amazon that you actually had to assemble. Uh, once I got it together though, which it wasn't that hard, 
I have been loving it. It comes with three cup and it rotates around. It holds a ton of pens. So I've been really happy with that. If you are trying to organize your desk and you want a th way to organize pens, try this because it doesn't take up much space on your desk and it's easier to get to the pens quickly and keep them organized. See, I get off track if the pens are in a drawer because I'll get a pen out and then I'm really bad about putting it back in the drawer. And instead of putting it back in the drawer, I end up putting like random bits and bobs in back in the drawer. And before you know it, it's a junk drawer and the surface of my desk is full of miscellaneous pens. So this is more doable for me to have that. Apparel favorite from the month are these Anne Rebess lounge suits. They're so comfortable. If you like to wear loungewear, but you want something that is a little cute and you could dress up a bit if you were gonna go out and run errands, uh, these are great. They have an elastic waistband. The cut's really flattering. It doesn't just look like you're in a sweatsuit but you can dress it up. Yeah, they're very comfortable. I bought several pieces of clothing from this Anne Rebess company and everything has been very good. I've washed these lounge suits numerous times and the colors don't fade. They don't wrinkle, which is another thing I like because uh, as zen as ironing and steaming clothing is, I don't make time to do that. So it's nice to have comfortable clothing that doesn't look like doesn't look all wrinkly. Speaking of wrinkles, did you see my recent short that I stitched with that woman over on TikTok who had a very interesting idea about how anti-wrinkle cream should be tested? Definitely go check that out if you are looking for a good laugh. This month, I specifically did a trial membership of Hulu for the sole purpose of watching The Dropout, and I'm so glad I did. I have been fascinated by the Elizabeth Holmes case because when I was doing my postdoc, I remember the my PI, which is like the boss, came in like all breathless, like super excited and about you know this woman in science and she had dropped out from Stanford and he was going on and on about this um, device she had allegedly come up with where you could run all of these lab tests on a single drop of blood. And I remember saying at the time, like, how is that even possible? Because lab tests, there's like a limit, you know, a threshold, a volume that you need to, for, for it to be able to detect values. And he kind of brushed me off and I felt like, well, you know, whatever, I guess I don't dream big or whatever. And I think he said something along, he, he also said something along those lines, like, oh, well, you know, you've got to think, you've got to think big picture. <laughs> and I just remember going back to my bench and being like, okay, running my Western. Lo and behold, she was a complete fraud. Now, the series on Hulu was very good, in my opinion. Amanda Seyfried did such a good job, and I highly recommend watching it because there are so many characteristics that she exhibits that are so typical of highly manipulative people. You're bound in your lifetime to encounter people like this. It's just a matter of time if you haven't already. They use certain tactics to manipulate, and, and you can see a lot of them that she utilized in, in this series. Uh, like for example, they always seem to, they save little tidbits and, and keep them in their back pocket. And then when they want something from you, all of a sudden they pull that tidbit out to guilt you or shame you or something of that sort. Yeah, that's a technique that manipulative people will definitely utilize. It's amazing to me though, how she was able to convince all these people to just give her money. And then when people kind of started questioning, she was able to just manipulate them to keep believing her. It's, it's really good. And I'm still fascinated by this case. So where the show ends, there's obviously more to the story that has since unfolded. She went on to get married to this guy who appears to be very wealthy and she got pregnant and oh, how convenient the pandemic. So that kind of slowed down her trial and everything. And then she got pregnant again. So she has two children. She did get sentenced to, I think, 11 years in prison, um, but it sounds like a very cushy prison. She's gonna be back out. I would not be surprised if once she gets out of jail, she'll go right back to scamming people, to frauding and scamming. Because these people, they don't, they don't quit. It's not like she's just gonna go back. It's not like she's gonna get out of jail and be a peaceful law abiding citizen. She's gonna to continue to manipulate people and abuse. That's my opinion. I don't obviously know her, but I learned from this show that she actually is from Houston. Like she went to high school here, uh, which I didn't know. Uh, I, I think I remember hearing that her father was involved in the Enron 
uh, debacle back in, was that the 90s? But I didn't realize, I didn't put two and two together to realize, oh, that she must have lived here, at least at some point. Yes, she did. Let me know if you watched The Dropout. I really liked it. But after I finished watching it, I canceled my Hulu trial membership because I don't want to end up getting sucked into paying for Hulu and not using it. So I went ahead and canceled it. But that was really good. And last but not least, I read a book this month that I highly recommend if you like European history. Um, it's Heretics and Heroes by Thomas Cahill. He wrote How the Irish Saved Civilization. This is so good. Um, it's just uh, an, an account of certain things throughout history, starting with the Black Death and, and you know through the uh, Reformation. And it's a fun read because history can be kind of dry, especially if you're not like a history buff, as people like to describe themselves. I never understood that as a side note. Like, why do we call people who like history, history buffs? Like, okay, well, that's just a weird description. Anyway, if you like history, then you like it. But if you kind of like it, but find it a little dry, this is a great read because the author is pretty funny. He makes little, he has a, like a funny dry sense of humor and uh, it's rather enjoyable. And it's kind of cool because it, it really helps tie together a lot of pieces of European history that I feel as though I was a bit, I feel as though we're a bit disjointed in my brain. Uh, it also goes into art history, with photographs. I really liked this. It was a, a very good, very good book. And I want to read How the Irish Saved Civilization next, I think, uh, at some point. But yeah, big plug for the library as a side note. Like, I'm telling you, this day and age, we have all of this media flash in front of our faces all the time, short form content. It limits our attention span and it very much pushes us to command instant gratification. People will describe it as like getting a hit of dopamine by consuming social media, like either you're getting validation or you know, a rise out of people, whatever it is. I do think going back and just hanging out in the library, screen free, picking up a book or a magazine, I think it's good for your attention span. And I'm a big advocate of the library. Um, they're amazing institutions and I think we should should support them and not give all of our attention over to these apps that control a lot of us. <laughs> all right, y'all, that is a wrap up for the month of January. Lots of skincare fails, one skincare win, and a ton of lifestyle things that helped get my year off to a good start. I hope you guys had a great January and look forward to more videos this month. And let me know in the comments what a favorite you enjoyed from the month was. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.